Hey everyone, what's going on? Um, I just reviewed Beacon Rewind a few days ago, and today I have a real, real juicy one for you. Um, I was fortunate enough to watch Disaster Movie. I found it somewhere on the internet, didn't pay for it, so that was always a plus. Um, and, wow, I didn't think they could top Meet the Spartans, but... <laughs> I mean, they might as well have called it... Uh, Oscar winners of 2007 slash 2008 movie. That would have been more accurate than disaster movie because despite meteors falling on people and cows hitting people, that was the only disaster that there was. Besides the entire movie. The whole movie was a disaster from itself. Not whatever. Anyway, um, there are are so many things that are wrong with this movie. First of all, there was a Brangelina joke about 15 minutes in. in. In Epic Movie, it's in the first, like, six minutes when you see uh, the one girl on the plane going over to meet her parents, and it says it's Brangelina. Then to meet the Spartans right at the beginning. A Vietnamese baby goes to Brangelina. But then you see it in this, when you first see Junie, instead of Juno, clever, and uh, Polly Bleeker singing their songs for the first time. They sing uh, about Junie getting an abortion. Bleeker says he'll do it himself with a wire hanger. That's hilarious. And uh, Junie says no. Like Jamie Lynn Spears, she's keeping her baby. And that she's going to sell it on eBay. And then it shows on her computer the eBay site. And Brangeline is the highest bidder. And that's awful. Next up, the impersonators doing all the characters. Come on, people from Mad TV, you're better than this. I'm a fan of Mad TV. I know I'm gonna cat catch a bunch of crap for that, but whatever. I mean, Nicole Parker, Krista Flanagan, and Ike Baron Holtz play about sixty different characters, and it's so dumb. Just come on. We know. You, all right, fine. You can look like a character if you have enough makeup. I can look like. I can look like. Condoleezza Rice if I have enough makeup on. <laughs> I mean, it's, not, it's It's nothing to be proud of. I am Beowulf. They... Yeah. Um, but yeah, Beowulf's in it. What? In the museum. In the museum they go and they try to rescue the main character's girlfriend who works at the History Museum. She got impaled, like in Cloverfield finally a disaster movie and uh they go there and everything comes to life like night at the museum and beowulf is there and then this, this is at the end of the movie but then they go to try to return the crystal skull that somehow they found um i don't remember because it wasn't really caring too much and they see that the shrine looks like an indiana jones set and then indiana jones comes but it's tony cox the little black midget who's in all the other movies and i'm pissed off at this too because i know he's funnier in like bad santa for instance but he, why he continues to do this stuff it makes no sense <sighs> and then another part of the museum alvin and the chipmunks are there and they sing two songs like regular the first one's a christmas song just because you know alvin and the chipmunks are most famous for singing that christmas song then they sing a dancing song to which everyone dances and then they sing a speed metal song, and then the characters figure out that they have rabies, and the chipmunks attack. But another thing that was frustrating is that every time a character, like, impersonator was introduced, they had to say who they were. It was so dumb. Like, if a Dr. Phil impersonator would come in and be like, Hey, Matt, it's your friend, Dr. Phil. I mean, they're pretty much saying to their audience, You're that stupid. Let's make the connection for who these characters are in case you don't get it. And if you can't tell that a giant green guy with no shirt and jean shorts on is the Hulk, if you can't make that connection, you should just shoot yourself in the face. Because, come on, who else is there? You see that Iron Man comes in and then it says, I am Iron Man, in case you didn't know. So, and then Hellboy comes, comes in, oh, I'm Hellboy. And then they see Batman, that's right, I am Batman. And then, ugh, it's so friggin' frustrating. 
I didn't want to talk about it, but I want to show, I'm going to tell the world this so they don't have to pay money to see it or rent it or buy it or if you do buy it. Ugh. Another thing, just uh, they had Kung Fu Panda there in the museum for God knows what reason with fight scenes and dance scenes that went on for like 15 minutes each. Like a combined time for the fights and dances maybe was about 20 minutes, which is about a third of the movie. There's a whole high school musical dance number which has so many different characters, Justin Timberlake and a male model and so much crap. It makes you want to throw up and then bleh, just even more. But the way the movie ends, which was hilarious, is um, the main character and his girlfriend are getting married by the love guru but he says, hey, I want to play a song for you. And he starts playing the guitar. And then it goes into the I'm Dating Matt Damon. Where if anyone has seen the actual funny version of that from Sarah Silverman, it's I'm Effing Matt Damon. And then uh, Jimmy Kimmel had the I'm Effing Ben Affleck comeback. But the whole end of the movie is that parody of that song, that goes, which goes on for like another seven, seven minutes. And I don't know why it's there. Because obviously you'd have to watch something that's funny to get that reference. Which I don't believe a lot of the people who saw Disaster Movie would have taken the time out to do. Because it's a viral video, which is another thing. They just make fun of viral videos. Like in Me the Spartans, they had the Chris Crocker thing. In this, they had the Sarah Silverman, Matt Damon thing. But, I mean... They had American Gladiators in 10,001 B.C. with Amy Winehouse and Flavor Flav and a midget and some other stupid crap which no one really cared about and Hannah Montana and the Jonas Brothers and they mentioned all that. 2008 movie would have been... 2008 trailer movie would have been such a more suitable thing because it really looks like... like Everyone who's reviewing this movie says this and it's absolutely true that all they did was take the parts from the trailers that they saw and put it into the movie. So, 2008 trailer movie would have been a much, much better title for this. I still wouldn't have seen it. I still would have shunned it and boycotted it or whatever. But, that would have been more accurate. Another thing, which I saw another reviewer already talk about, which is true. There wasn't as much product placement, or blatant product placement, in this as there was in their previous films. Because, like he said, no one would back them up. No one gave them the rights to use these products. Like, I saw... Apple, I saw the their notebooks and stuff. I saw Ambien, which was made really stupidly clear. Um, and that's about it. The music was all original by Friedberg and Seltzer, like some, uh, some of the other reviewers have said, because no one would give them the rights to their music, which is good. Which means no one's watching them anymore. That's what we want. So hopefully, I mean, this movie only made about $6 million opening weekend. So hopefully it won't make its budget back. I don't think it's going to. It's doing really crappy right now. It won't make its budget back, and they'll be done forever. The only thing they have on IMDb Pro right now in production, Freeberg and Seltzer, is Scary Movie 5 as writers of the characters. So they're not even attached to it, which is great. So hopefully their careers will be done. Anyway, don't see Disaster Movie. Please, I beg you, by any means. My final grade for this is an F for friggin' failure, Friedberg and Seltzer.